It's fairly common for us to see that much of the technology we use daily is developed in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley and exported to Australia. Well, Aquacell is reversing this trend. Their systems are designed and built in Western Sydney and installed in the Bay Area and beyond. Introducing Hugh Fisher from Aquacell. Good morning, everyone. My name's Hugh Fisher and I work in business development for Aquacell. We exist simply because water should be used more than once. Often we hear of single-use plastic and renewable energy, but the conversation very rarely shifts to single-use water. By looking at water in the same context, we can provide an infinite value and use of a finite resource. We're a 100% privately owned Australian business with operations in Australia and in the USA. We're water and wastewater design, build and operate experts, and we have a private utility license or multiple of them in New South Wales. By 2025, two thirds of the world's population may be facing water shortages. Increasing population, agriculture and industry, paired with the societal propensity for single use water, will increase drought impacts of the future and water shortages. Our solution simply is to use water more than once. Strategic implementation of decentralised water recycling systems will reduce the strain on potable water systems, provide irrigation water and mitigate the urban heat island effect. As shown, our competitive position is promising. Our management team, regulatory factors and momentum are all the basis for our positive business assessment. As Jamie alluded to before, we often see technology being developed in Silicon Valley and the Bay Area and exported here. We're reversing the trend of that, with two of our highest profile projects being the new Facebook campus in Silicon Valley and the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco. Back home, we've recently installed Australia's first membrane aerated bioreactor system as part of the world's first shopping centre in the world that's targeting Living Building Challenge certification, the Burwood Brickworks project. All of these projects are the, some of the highest profile in the world, with their rigorous innovation and sustainability processes all leading to the same solution. Aquacell, thank you. Well, thanks, Hugh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hugh. Um, I love the term you've used of single-use water, and I think you. that you know we have a moral responsibility to get a lot better at how we use water. I'm interested to know in terms of your private utility licence um, and how that could, licensing arrangement could be of benefit in residential developments, particularly in regional or, or fringe areas? Yes, so the private utility licence allows private companies such as ours to provide you know, infrastructure such as a Hunter Water or a Sydney Water would provide for a metropolitan area. In a lot of kind of cases when you're developing on the fringes of, um, of regional areas, there isn't an access to sewer and it's not feasible necessarily for the big public utilities to provide that service for a smaller development. Companies like us can provide that service through a private utility licence and therefore expand the kind of the area for development in fringe areas by providing that service which is a condition of development approvals. Thank you. So you guys are here in the driest continent in the world, I think we are. Yes. And you're developing the best technology in the world and we're exporting it to the USA. What's happening in the Australian market? Uh, there is a bit happening in the Australian market. We do have a lot of installations, particularly across Sydney and Melbourne, uh, with some in Brisbane and in Perth as well. The reason for the export to San Francisco is that there's a mandate for recycled water in that area, right. which requires new developments of a certain size to include on-site decentralised water recycling which there is talk and progression in bringing that in here. And Australia was initially, particularly Sydney and Melbourne, ahead of San Francisco a number of years ago in the millennium drought. Right. We've kind of fallen off a little bit, but now we're looking to, to pick so, it back so up. So your business is largely regulation driven, perhaps? <laughs> yes, right? and sustainability drivers are a big factor yeah. um, for larger corporates, um, yeah. for you know, increasing tenancy yields and looking at yeah. their kind of sustainability ratings. So, so where do you see the biggest market growth? Is it locally or internationally? Internationally, because there is a bigger market abroad. America is a much bigger, right. bigger market than here. Europe and the Asias as well. Um, Australia, there is a lot more room for it as well, yep. but those markets are typically bigger with bigger economic and, and as you want to grow the company now with the whole COVID-19 situation, what does that mean for the future, the next couple of years, at least in terms of the international market? Is there still demand there that you're seeing? Yes, definitely. I mean. The COVID thing is quite an interesting one. I mean, it probably lends itself quite well to bringing things further here as well, yeah. but we're looking at kind of decentralising our workforces globally as a result of COVID. And having a decentralised workforce would mean decentralised utilities, such as decentralised water recycling. So it's transferable across the world in that right. context. Okay, cool. thanks, Hugh. So we're sitting here in the middle of the year. 
um, and, and it's almost as though the bushfire season is a distant memory with everything else that's been going on. So to, to bring us back to something you mentioned around urban heat island effect, um, how will it help? Well, the most kind of well-renowned or the most well kind of justified mechanism of mitigating the heat, urban heat island effect is to increase the greenery in, in urban areas. And in a drought-stricken country, as Don mentioned before, it's difficult to you know, provide greenery, greenery without a source of sustainable irrigation water. So having decentralised water recycling systems can provide a constant supply of sustainable water for irrigation, which kind of lends itself nicely to, to greening the urban areas as well. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Hugh. Thanks, Hugh. Thank well you. done. Thanks. I mean, the drought we've just come out of forced mm. most of us into probably the most conservative use of water. Parts of the state were on level four, level five. I yeah. think we need yeah. we need that lived experience yeah. ourselves to start saying, I don't want to flush my toilet with potable single use water. Yeah. You know? Our, our <laughs> children will think we were crazy. Yeah, that's right. yeah. The idea that you flush a toilet with drinking water is insane. Yeah.